Welcome to this new tutorial on the use of the software Sapphire. Uh, today we are going to do a 3D structural model of a steel beam protected with uh, one inch of thermal insulation. So the structural model is going to look like this. We have a simply supported beam under uniformly distributed load. The beam is six meters in length, and we are going to do a variation using a different profile and then applying one inch of uh, sprayed fire resistive material uh, around the cross section. And the beam is going to be exposed to standard ASTM E119 fire on its four sides until uh, failure. Material properties are given here. So we are going to build this model in the software preprocessor Git. So first we have to select the problem types. Uh, and we are going to start with the thermal 2D analysis to define the cross-section and run the, the temperature analysis. Git loaded the problem types. I'm now going to create a, a folder or save the project. I'm going to save it here in um, beam thermal uh, project. For the cross-section, we are going to use a commercial profile, which is uh, provided in the library here uh, as a IPE 500, IP 500. And we are going to use, um, so to use the pre-embedded uh, dimensions of the profile. And we don't need to, to select the uh, box for exact shape or for uh, concrete slab. So exact shape would model the root fillet uh, uh, exactly. But here we are going to use um, the rectangle uh, for the flanges and, and webs. It will help for the definition of the insulation. So let's just apply. And we get this uh, geometry here. And you see that the root fillet is uh, slightly uh, simplified as a, as a triangle. OK, so we have our steel profile, but in this problem, it is protected with one inch of sprayed fire resistive material all uh, around the profile. So we have to create this, this layer of insulation. And the way to do it efficiently in the preprocessor is described in the, um, uh, in the tutorial that's available on the website. We are going to use the uh, copy function in the utilities menu and select entities points uh, of the of the uh, entities types um, points, so the different nodes, use the translation, and we will just uh, will apply then uh, one inch from the from the nodes. No problem. Cancel. So we are moving here into. Um, so first, let's add the labels, which will help us to discuss the different uh, node numbers. So let's move into utilities and select copy. Entities type will leave it at in points, and translation will leave it in translation. So here I can apply. Uh, I can create new nodes. Um, not by specifying the absolute value of the coordinates of these loads, but by applying a translation from existing nodes, which is easier if what I want to do is apply a certain thickness of insulation. I don't need to worry about the initial position of my flange. I just apply a translation. So I'll say that my first reference point is 0, 0, 0, and I'll just want to move from um, one inch in X and Y direction. I do not need to extrude here and I do not need to uh, make copies. So I can now click on select and I will select existing nodes. Uh, and here in particular, I will select node 14. So I'm moving in the right direction for X and Y. So I have to think at which nodes um, this applies. So this would be node 14 uh, here, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, 27, 5, and 4. So I believe this is correct. If I select uh, Finish, I see that here I created new nodes 
uh, automatically, which are at a distance of uh, one inch. Okay. I can now uh, change the uh, Y translation to a minus. And I will select node 14 and the two nodes here, as well as node uh, three. And if I select finish, I create those uh, nodes here, okay? Uh, finally, or next step, I will uh, use minus X minus Y. And I will select node one, node 20, 18, and 17. And at minus for X and plus for Y, can select node 16, 26, 24, and 22. And I created those nodes, okay? So now I'll be able to uh, join all these new nodes using uh, lines here. And uh, so it helped me in defining the geometry of this uh, sickness insulation. So to select an existing node, I'm going to uh, click on Control A, as, which allows me to pick an existing point. You should see pick an existing point in the command line here. And now I can go around my profile, um, selecting all those nodes. So I started here with 47, 38, 42, 41, 40 and so on. And I'm uh, going around the profile, creating this layer of insulation of spread fire resistive uh, material. Okay, when, uh, when you are done, uh, you press escape to uh, well, escape this, this menu of, of uh, creating the lines. So now we have our steel profile and we have around the lines that define the insulation. We need to create the surface. So I'm going to select here the create NURB surface menu. And I'm going to select all the lines that form, uh, that define this surface. Okay, so I have the exterior uh, boundaries of the surface. I'm going around here in the newly created lines, but I also have the interior boundaries, of course. So from the web, the upper flange. The lower flange. And I think I selected everything. So when I click Escape, it created this new uh, surface. Okay, so you see it's not very easy to see because it's superponed with the entire profile. But here you have uh, new surface that has been created and that is uh, hollow, or which has the profile inserted inside, okay? So this concludes the creation of the geometry for this beam. So now I'm going to go into the data menu and go one by one in the uh, sub, sub menu. So starting with conditions. Our um, beam is subject to uh, the uh, ISTM E119 fire on four sides. So I'm going to select the line constraint, frontier constraints, and I'll select the STM E119 is the temperature curve. I have to assign this to lines, okay, in blue always uh, for the temperature conditions. And of course, I assign it to the exterior lines, uh, in other words, to the uh, insulation material, okay. And I'm going all around the profile. Okay, this is finished. I can check with uh, well, by drawing the uh, frontier conditions that I went all around. I did not forget any uh, any boundaries. I have also to make sure that there is a torsion constraint if I want to run the torsional analysis for subsequent 3D structural analysis. Here, I forgot to select here torsion. Here, if I draw, I see that there is one already applied because I selected the profile directly from the library of existing profiles. So that was uh, handled, but always have at least one point on the vertical axis of symmetry with the torsion constraint. So here, this is fine. Next, I'm going to data materials. I'm going to define materials for this beam. 
Uh, for steel, I'm going to use steel EC3 EN uh, as the steel according to your code 3. This is fine. Convection coefficient of 25 uh, watt per square meter Kelvin is recommended for a standard fire. Convection coefficient of cold surface as well and relative emission. I don't need to change anything here. In the mechanical properties for running the torsional analysis, uh, the default properties are also appropriate for my, my inputs. I have a 355 megapascal uh, steel. So I can assign this, I did not change anything here, to surfaces, and I'm going to pick the surfaces of the uh, steel profile. Here to make sure I don't forget anything, what I'm going to do is select all surfaces and then unselect the one uh, which is the insulation. And that's the most straightforward way. I can also check that I have the whole profile here uh, in steel. Okay, next I have to define the properties of the insulation. I'll see what, is, uh, what has been chosen in the tutorial to be consistent. So it was an insulation material with 0 0.12 of thermal conductivity, 1100 to 40, so let's do the same. So I'm going to select insulation. Insulation, the thermal conductivity was 0 0.12. Specific heat, I believe 1100. Specific mass is 240 kilo per cubic meter, 16.5 of water. And the convection coefficient and emissivity are as according to uh, Eurocode. So I'm going to assign those properties. There is no mechanical properties for insulation. It's not going to participate to the torsion stiffness because it's just an insulating material. I'm assigning this to the insulation. And again, I can draw all materials and check that I now have uh, steel and insulation properly applied. Well, we now have assigned the fire, we've assigned the materials. We go now into problem data. And here is where we'll define some general uh, data of the problem, such as the time step, the uh, final time, and so on. So the global center and center of torsion, I'm going to leave them at, uh, in the center of the cross section 0, 0 here. I'm going to use a time step of 12 seconds. I'm going to increase the uptime and run this example for two hours. So I'm going to uh, use 7,200 and, and I'm going to print the result every 60 seconds. This sounds good. I'm going to auto run a torsion analysis and insert the result in the TEM file. This way I will have the torsional analysis information for the uh, appropriate degree of freedom of warping in the 3D structural analysis. And I'm going to take also this box to consider um, a reduction coefficient of 0 0.1 in the mechanical properties when I evaluate the torsional stiffness, such that it is a stiffness at elevated temperature. I'm going to accept. Okay. Now I have to build the mesh. I'll just have a look at what was used in the tutorial for the mesh size. Uh, we can use a size element of, let's try with 0 0.015 and see if we have enough elements with this version of the of Git with the free version. So we need to generate a mesh of size 0 0.015. Uh, and this will be used as the um, default size, appropriate size for all um, the, the surfaces. Okay, this uh, worked. We have uh, 674 triangle elements and 401 nodes. And this is what the mesh looks like. And now we are ready to calculate. So I'm going to calculate this uh, thermal analysis. And you see the uh, calculation process. So it's going to be quite fast, maybe about uh, 20 seconds to run this, this calculation for two hours and uh, it has uh, finished. So this completed the thermal analysis. We'll now uh, momentarily uh, reduce uh, Git and have a look quickly in Diamond to uh, just check the, the results, the temperatures that we have in this, in this cross section. So I was here working in the uh, beam thermal folder and I have this, uh, this problem with this mesh, the contour with my steel profile protected by 
thermal insulation. I can check the, the properties here. And I can uh, have a look at the temperatures. And uh, I see that I have a temperature increase. But mostly at the beginning, of course, in the uh, insulation material and the steel remains relatively cold. And I see after, after one hour, if I look in the uh, upper flange, for example, I'm, I'm at about 300 degrees C. And it will continue increasing. I run the simulation for, for two hours. And I see that I reach about uh, 550 degrees C in the web and almost 600 degrees C uh, in the web, sorry, and 550 in the upper flange um, for this problem. I can also plot temperature at a node of interest, for example, here in the upper flange, I see the temperature increase uh, over the two hours of the calculation, okay? Good, so now let's go back to Git. We're going to save this project and create a new one. We are now going to create our 3D structural analysis for the beam. I'm going to change the problem types here to uh, structural 3D. Git loaded the problem types. I'm going to create the folder and save uh, immediately. So I'm going to save this as beam st for structural. When I save, Git created a folder beam st. I will already copy the information here beam th dot tem with the thermal the thermal um, results and the uh, cross-section information in the folder bmst.git because I will need that. Safir will need this information when running the structural analysis. Okay, so let's look at the tutorial to see uh, what inputs we have for this beam. We will uh, change the viewpoint to uh, be appropriate for 3D analysis. Then we create a straight line and I see that the beam is six meters long in this, uh, in this problem. So let's go into view, rotate, and select the isometric view. And then we'll select the uh, create line command. And we'll enter the coordinates of the nodes in the command box. So we'll type 0, 0, 0, and then 6, 0, 0. And uh, this is it. I can then press escape. So this is simply a six meter long beam. We can now go, since the geometry is defined, it was very simple here, we can go into data, select one by one the different menus. So let's start with constraints. These are the mechanical boundary conditions. I'm going to um, apply boundary conditions for a simply supported beam. I believe this is what we have. So uh, we'll assign, um, X, Y, Z and rotation along X and one node and Y and Z at the other node. So here, let's tick the box for X, Y, Z rotation along X and assign this to this end node. And then you unselect the X degrees of freedom. You keep only Y and Z translation uh, boundaries constraint and you assign to the other end node. This is for the mechanical boundary conditions. Next, we will assign loads. And we will assign, OK, here in this example, it was a distributed load of uh, minus 50 kilonewton per meter. Uh, we will we'll even use a little bit more here because we use the different uh, cross section. So what's important is that it's a downward vertical load. So it's a Z. Uh, direction and let's use minus 80,000. And we will use the load function F load, which um, means that the load is applied progressively over the first 20 seconds of the calculation, which helps if, um, well, which helps for the loading not to be too, too sudden applied on the, in one over one step. Okay. So this was for the definition of the loads. 
Next, we have to create the local axis. The local axis need to be defined such that the software know, knows how the uh, cross section is oriented okay, over, the, over the beam. So here we want to create local axis that look like this with X, local X, which is along the longitudinal direction of the beam and Y that points upward such that our profile will be oriented for strong axis uh, bending. So we're going to data local axis define, use the method uh, three points X, Z, select uh, point A, point one, and then point two, and then zero minus one, zero. So let's do this. So let's go into data local axis define. Here we can enter a name, let's use LAX. And then there are different, or there are two different modes to define local axis. Here we will define them by defining three points that define those axes, okay? Three points that define first the orientation of uh, local axis X and then uh, Z. Right, so it starts by defining uh, local axis center. I will uh, select this end node of the beam. Re re remember that to select an existing node, you press first control A. Then you can just click on the node, okay? And then uh, you see in the comment box that now starting from this local axis center, I have to pick a node or select a node that defines the uh, local X axis. Here I want the local X to be actually aligned with the global X along the longitudinal direction of the beam. So I can pick the second end node of the beam and that would be appropriate uh, to define it the way I want. Now for Z, I have actually two points um, for the local Z, I have two points opposite the global Y axis. And this way, if you look at your right hand rule, you will have the Y pointing upward. Actually, I want the local Y to be uh, along the global Z, okay? So in order to do that for the Z, I will define zero minus one zero as the direction uh, moving from the, the center, okay? Zero minus one zero. And this way I define my uh, local axis system of coordinates, where again, the objective was to orientate the cross section appropriately here with the Y pointing upward such that it, it acts in um, uh, strong bending, uh, for, for this beam. Okay, next we'll move to the materials. We have two materials in this problem, the steel and the insulation, and we'll have to specify the mechanical properties. So I'm going into data, material. Takes just a few seconds to load up the menu. I'm going here in general, I have to select two materials. Material one is going to be steel. And I'm going to make sure to select TDC3EN. You see that there are lots of materials available for uh, beam um, finite elements in the mechanical model. So let's select TDC3EN. I check the properties. I want to change here the yield strength to 3.55 because it's a 355 megapascal um, strength. The maximum temperature here is defined in case of natural fire exposure with a cooling phase as the maximum temperature beyond which the behavior, the, the strength is not recovered, the behavior is not reversible. And if you uh, have a natural fire and this maximum temperature, you, you set it to a lower value, you can then specify the rate of decrease of the yield strength for each degree C that exceeded this maximum temperature. Here, those two parameters are irrelevant because we are adopting a standard uh, fire exposure. So this uh, is for definition of for material one. Material two in the problem is an insulation material. When I select insulation, you see that there are no inputs uh, to specify because an insulation material is not going to have any mechanical properties. So it's, it tells the software basically to disregard the fibers made of this material number two in the model. Okay. Next, we will define the properties of our beam. Going to data properties. Here I have to input the name of the TEM file 
where uh, Saphir is going to find information about the cross section and the temperature. In our case, it was beamth.tem. This is also the file that I uh, located in the same folder, okay, in the same Git folder where I'm doing this structural analysis. We're going to select the local axes that are applicable for those elements of which I'm assigning the properties. These are the local axis LAX shown here uh, in, uh, in the, on the beam. And this properties, these sections uh, has two materials. The material one in the section, which was the steel of the profile has the global material number one in the structural input file and uh, material two insulation as the global material number two. Here it is trivial to match the materials, but it can be more complex or it's more sophisticated when we have different section files that we use together in a, in a given structural analysis. I can assign this to the beam. And this uh, is it for the properties definition. Next, I will assign a mass uh, because I will be running a dynamic analysis. We'll simply put 100 kilo per meter as distributed beam mass and uh, two as rotational inertia. And then we will define the general problem data. We'll come back to uh, this. So we do uh, quickly the mass, which is only needed if you run a dynamic analysis. It is not if you run a static analysis. And finally, we can define the problem data. You see that there was another menu for relaxations that we are not going to use here. So here, I'm not going to change the title of the problem, the solver. What I'm going to do is change the, the loads here to a dynamic pure newton raphson uh, strategy of calculation. I have to specify the minimum time step. I'm going to go with something smaller than one second. I'm going to use 0.002 seconds. This is the minimum time step when the software is uh, running comebacks to try to converge. Um, so by using something small, you usually can go further in the failure mode. Uh, precision, I can even change. There is only one section type here. So the NGO beam is one. So this, con this corresponds to the number of TM files that you're mapping to. Uh, two goes integration point along the length of the beam element is fine. For the fibers, I believe I had more than uh, 440. I'm going to uh, put 1000. I do not have any truss, do not have any shell, do not have any shell, no rebars. For the time step, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to start with two seconds, but the software is going to accelerate if it can. The end time will be 7,200 seconds because I ran the analysis for two hours. We'll see if we have a failure within the two hours of standard fair exposure. It might be that we don't because the temperature of the steel was between 550, 600 degrees C. So it will depend on the applied load ratio. The time step max, I can allow it to go even, even greater than that. And I'm going to print every time step. Okay, so this is for the uh, time inputs, but then you can also uh, select the inputs that I want to print here. By default, I see that the internal forces of beams will be printed and the reaction. So this is uh, appropriate. And now I can uh, mesh this uh, problem. I believe we've defined everything here. So we don't have any relaxations. We define the material. So I'm going to go into mesh. I'm going to use a structured mesh on the lines and assign number of cells. I'm going to select uh, 12 elements for this beam. Can then uh, generate the mesh. And finally, we can run the calculation. You see that uh, it, the time step will be automatically adjusted. It can grow and increase up to 72 seconds um, when the convergence is fast, and then it's going to slow down. And at the end, you see that around 6,000 seconds where the failure occurred, apparently, uh, it's, it uh, slowed down. And then we have the comeback, and the minimum time step can be two thousandths of a second. The calculation is finished. You see it was quite fast. And uh, 
it did not succeed in going up uh, to, to the two hours of calculation. Uh, it stopped before, so it, we expect that maybe the beam has failed uh, at around uh, 6,000 seconds. So now we have to analyze the results. So we're going back into diamond. Actually, I'm going to leave this diamond of uh, the cross section open, and it will be interesting to look at the temperature distribution at the time close to the time of failure. So I'm going to open a second window of diamond. I'm going to open now the structural file, the beam structural. I can look at the elements, the supports, the applied loads. I can adjust the, um, and the scale of these applied loads. Okay, so I have these distributed loads as I expect. I can look at the local axis, which are ex as expected with the Y uh, pointing upward. I have different views. Okay, I can go back to the eyes of view. Uh, let's now look at the deformation. And I can increase the time step and see how this beam uh, deflects. Okay, but I'm going to move faster and go toward the end. And it's probably easier to see if we looked at it from the side, actually. Okay, so you see here uh, that we have some axial uh, displacement also. Remember, this beam is simply supported. It can expand during the fire. And of course, we are going to see some vertical deformation also that increases and I expect it to increase quite fast toward uh, the end of the calculation. So where we, we are right now, okay. And so you see that there suddenly you had uh, an increase creation of a, a, a plastic uh, hinge here at mid span of the beam. Probably with also, you see the displacement of the support here. Um, that accompanies this vertical displacement. And you see a lot of, lots of ductility. Uh, so see the scale of the displacement is, is one. Okay, so displacement are not amplified here. So here in a real structure uh, would probably have failed already because of a loss of support, okay? Uh, but you see the software is quite um, robust in going into the failure mode, but all this happens over uh, less than uh, one tenth of a second, okay? So this is also the, interest of the dynamic analysis is that you find conversions quite uh, far in terms of the displacement here to really see what the failure mode is, which is obvious here in the case of a simply supported beam. But when you have a frame structure, more complex structure, you can understand uh, whether it would be failure by sway mode, inward, outward, and so on. It can be, it can be interesting to capture this. We can also plot displacements, so get select nodes. So for example, here it's node six, uh, no, it's not at mid span actually. A uh, node. Um, well, let's look at node six. And I want the displacement along uh, translation along Z. So you see here a small increase at the beginning, which is when we loaded the beam. Remember, we used F loads, so it was a loading in 20 seconds. Uh, it led to one centimeter, 1.2 centimeter of vertical displacement over six meters of span. And then uh, not much happens during the, you know, the first hour of the fire because this beam is protected with the insulation material, okay? Uh, so after one hour, you have, uh, have 1.6 centimeter of vertical span instead of 1.3. And if we look at the temperatures after one hour, Okay, so it's always interesting, of course, to go uh, back and forth from the thermal to the structural because the two are, are, are linked, of course. So you see that we had 300 degrees C in the flange, okay, 315 the web. So there is no reduction of uh, strength yet at this temperature and, very, and a little bit of reduction of uh, modulus. Um, so it's expected that we don't have much effect yet on the structural response. But then once we reached, uh, of course, higher temperature, and especially here on 6,000 is when really the capacity is reduced and it has at some point met the demand in terms of bending moment at mid span. And this is where 
we have this vertical asymptote in the displacement, which is a clear indicator of, of failure here for, for this type of, of member. Okay, so again, if we go and look at the temperatures at 6,000 uh, seconds, we found 485 in the flange and 531 degree in the web. So uh, what would be interesting to do is to look at the load ratio, the ratio between the applied load and uh, more specifically even the applied bending moment at mid-span, um, uh, which is the demand of the member, over the bending moment capacity at ambient temperature initially for the beam. So we would have that ratio and we could relate it to the material reduction factor at the temperature at failure to, to double check um, that this behavior, when, when that the failure occurs when it was expected. Okay, so uh, maybe one last thing. You can have different types of uh, results also from diamond here. We could plot also the bending moment diagram. Uh, again, adjusting the, the scale here uh, for better visibility. Okay, you could, um, you could check here the uh, bending moment diagram and you can uh, even label and show um, show the values on the plots. Okay, here you see in uh, Newton meters, okay, what you have after, after loading uh, this beam. There will not be um, much uh, actual force here for this beam uh, simply supported, but you can, you can show those type of, of results, okay? Well, this concludes this tutorial. Thank you for your attention.